Hi, I'm Stormy Omardian. And you know, when I was single, I thought that if a relationship was meant to be, things would just work out. Well, after I was married, I learned the truth. <laughs> I learned that I should have been praying about this relationship way before I ever set out on my first date. My husband and I had problems in our marriage right from the beginning because I came into the marriage with a lot of hurt and my husband came in with a lot of anger and that resulted in a lot of strife. And at its worst point, I remember crying to God saying, I know what you said about divorce, Lord, but I can't live this way anymore. Help me, help me, Lord. And as I struggled with the strongest desire to take our children and leave, I sat on my bed, hugging my Bible and prayed. But God impressed upon my heart that if I would deliberately die to my desire to leave and give all my needs to the Lord, he would teach me how to lay down my life in prayer for my husband. And I saw that we could be better together than we would ever be separated if I would consent to it. And it hurt to say yes to this because I had to be willing to forgive and to let all past hurts go. And there were no guarantees. But when I did that, I felt hopeful for the first time in years. And in my book, The Power of a Praying Wife, I tell how from the time we were first married, I had my favorite three word prayer, which was, change him, Lord. <laughs> change him, Lord. Change him, Lord, change him, Lord. It became like a chant that I, that I prayed every day, you know, because I, I thought that if what irritated me most was changed, then everything would be fine. But God wanted me to learn to pray God's favorite three-word prayer, which is, change me, Lord. And that was very hard to do because I didn't feel like I was the one that needed changing. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but God pointed out to me that it wasn't a matter of who needed to change, but who was willing to change because we all need to be changed. God wanted my heart to be right because my resentment and unforgiveness had kept my prayers from being answered. In Psalm 66, 18, it says, if I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear. God wants our hearts to be right so that the answers to our prayers are not compromised. And God showed me that prayer for my husband must begin with prayer for his wife. My attitude had to be changed first. You know, we women sabotage our own prayers when we don't pray them from a right heart. And one of the best things I did was to tell my husband that I was praying for him. And every time I asked him, how do you want me to pray for you today? That produced the biggest miracles because every time I asked him that question, he would stop and tell me things and things I know he wouldn't have told me otherwise. And I began to see answers to prayer immediately. If he started to get angry about anything, instead of reacting to it, I would pray first and it would dissipate. If I had to talk to him about something that he would normally be irritated about, I would pray first. And then I would speak to him with a different attitude and he would respond differently. And it seemed the more I prayed, the more answers I saw. And then God expanded my vision and I began to pray about different aspects of my husband's life that I never thought to pray about before. Such things as his work or his finances, his future, his self-image and his ability to be a good father. That was a big one. The more I prayed for him, the more changes I saw in him and in me. And I have found that if you need to say something that's hard for your husband to hear, ask God for the right words and for the right time. It makes such a difference if we pray before we speak and then wait for the Lord's leading. It's often not the words we speak that will make a difference. 
It's the power of God accompanying them. And it's amazing how much power our words have when we pray before we say them. And as a wife, we don't have authority over our husbands, so don't get up your hopes. Uh, Luke 10, 19 says, we do have authority over all the power of the enemy. And I took authority over the enemy in our marriage. And now we've been married 40 years. And that's a great testimony to the power of God. So don't allow the enemy to steal your marriage out from under you. Fight for it in prayer. And in order to do that, you have to spend time with God. And James 4, 8 says, if you will draw near to God, he will draw near to you. But you know, so often we wives don't take the time we need for ourselves to draw near to the Lord. And in my book, The Power of a Praying Husband, which really is an explanation of the way a woman thinks and what she needs from her husband and why, I tell husbands that one of the most important things they need to pray for about their wife is her relationship with God, that it will grow and deepen and, and that she will be spiritually fed. And I, I want to tell you a, a couple of the paragraphs from this book, uh, The Power of, Pr of a Praying Husband. It's from the chapter called Her Spirit. It's about this subject. Now remember, this, uh, this is to guys, okay? Guys, your wife is like an automobile. She may be high maintenance, like an Italian sports car. She might be as refined and expensive as a German luxury sedan. She may be solid and sturdy, like an SUV, or delicate, like a show car. She could be an efficient six-cylinder type, or a faster but costlier V8 model. <laughs> she may be dependable in all kinds of weather, like a four-wheel drive, or she may have no downhill traction control at all, even on a good day. <laughs> Whatever she is, whether she is tiny, like a compact car, or full size and beyond, she needs fuel to make her run smoothly. Your wife's spirit is the gas in her car. She may have the greatest chassis, a fine interior, fabulous sleek lines, an engine that purrs like a kitten, a wonderful back seat, a roomy trunk, a beautiful nose, and all the standard accessories. But if she doesn't have fuel, then she's not going to run. Her exterior will still look good, but her power supply will be diminished. And when your wife's tank is empty, her sound system will still work. <laughs> <laughs> and she may appear to be in good shape, but her wheels won't turn because she can't accelerate, let alone get up to full speed. Her steering will go out, so she can't navigate. Her brakes won't function, so she can't stop when she needs to. She must be filled afresh with the fuel of the Holy Spirit each day. She must be charged with the power of God. When her tank is full, she'll have automatic climate control. She'll be able to go the distance, and the ride will be smooth. Does your wife have enough of what she needs for the distance she has to go today? Has she filled up? with the finest. That's from that book. And I want to encourage all of you women to be filled up with the finest every day. The Bible says, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. And the way you do that is to ask God for a fresh filling of his Holy Spirit. You need to have that full tank. You need to be able to go the distance and you want the ride to be smooth, your relationship with God will affect your marriage more than anything else. Don't neglect it. Don't sacrifice your time alone with the Lord. It's way too important for you and your family.